Hey there, welcome to Lima Bean Living. Today's video is going to be a marathon of me cleaning pantries or restocking food. Uh, if you guys haven't already checked out this video I've linked above, it kind of explains why I'm posting marathon videos right now and not a lot of new content. So please go ahead and check that out. And while the quality of some of these clips may not be ideal, uh, because of how the downloading process went. I do hope that these videos provide you guys cleaning and organizing motivation for your kitchen. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I will be doing a lot more of these videos in the future, and I hope you guys enjoy. Welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. And in this little video today, we will be tackling my parents' pantry. Now my parents' pantry isn't super unorganized or anything. I just have been feeling the urge to give it the over the top look. And I will be using a lot of items that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. If you wanna see the Dollar Tree haul video that I actually went over each of these products with you, go ahead and check that out. It will be linked up here in the cards above and down below in the description box. Now this video is gonna be a little different and kind of more unique than a lot of those typical organization videos that you guys see out there. And that's because my husband arrived yesterday with the rest of our kitchen stuff. For those of you guys who don't know, we recently moved from Texas to California to live with my parents. Now we did this because we thought it would be a little foolish with my husband getting out of the military to pick us like a, an apartment or a house to live in and then not really know exactly where he's going to land a job after he gets some more certifications under his belt. So we are moving in with my parents until we figure that all out. And in the meantime, you know, we need to put our stuff somewhere and I thought I would tackle my mom's pantry. To give her credit, it is not super unorganized or anything. It's just not over the top, I guess, as you would see with tons of baskets everywhere and labels. And that's just something that I like to do. And so I was like, hey, now that we have all of my stuff from Texas, I can work with it all and reorganize it and just kind of find a system that works you know, with, with all of our stuff. So that is what makes our video a little unique here. We already have a full pantry and I'm bringing in a whole bunch of other kitchen supplies and foods and canned goods. And we're gonna see if we can still make it fit in the same space. So the first thing I'm gonna do to try and tackle this pantry is actually just empty everything out. In the process of doing that, I'm gonna try to organize as I go and categorize things so that when I put them back, I'm not, having to do too many extra steps along the way. And before I put things back, I'm gonna give it a good wipe down. So let's get to that. Okay, I think I've gotten all of the food out of the pantry. There is still a little bit more like non-food items, I guess, uh, kind of on the bottom. That's where my mom stores some like decoration supplies, um, some activities for the kiddos when they come. And we got some containers up top here. So there still is a little bit more to empty out, but I've gotten all the food out and let me show you kind of how I've organized it. I have yet to open the boxes with our food in it, but this is everything I've taken out food wise from the pantry. And let me describe how I went ahead and organized this. So obviously you guys saw I began with the cans. I kind of have like lunch type items here, tried to separate like the veggies and the meat or beans and things like that. Then we have some beverages and then we got like fruits and I 
have the prego sauce or the pasta sauce here and kind of more dessert items and then like sauces or other types of seasonings and whatnot. And then we have the snacks that were organized in the pantry as well as like our cookies and our crackers. So we're gonna find a spot for everything here. But first let's wipe down the pantry. were the little containers that I picked up from Dollar Tree the first time around and then I had gone to Dollar Tree after that and the Dollar Tree that I went to had these even larger containers which I was so surprised to find because 
Again, these are the same price at Dollar Tree. So this one holds 14 and a quarter cups and the smaller one holds six and three quarters cups. So great find. I'm excited to have both because you know, some products give you a bigger volume and some other ones don't. So we're gonna have a variety. I'm gonna rinse these out and fill them up with our snacks. It is pretty late. I am pretty much done organizing the pantry. However, we do have a lot of stuff left over. We've got like tons of plastic bags, as you can see like everywhere. <laughs> plastic bags, paper bags, a lot of leftovers, particularly because California charges you now when you go to check out at a grocery store for plastic bags. So my parents are good at making sure they save theirs and recycle them. So that's why we got a lot over here. But we are gonna find a place for all of those somewhere else in our house. Let me show you the pantry. So starting on the bottom, we actually reused one of our moving boxes, Juan trimmed down the sides, and I used the contact paper that is on the shelves to just kind of make it a little bit nicer. And this took the place of a really big bag that was hanging right here. So now it's a little bit more spacious and we can just tuck away our recycles and dump that in the trash can outside when it's full. We also have these uh, little baskets that we picked up from the Dollar Tree again. I use Dollar Tree labels to label them and we've got our excess little fruit cups and kind of like some snacks in there for fruit. We've got our peanut butter and jelly, our overflow of cookies and a little bit of chips, chips and crackers, and then condiments. I tried to keep most of our like lunch and dinner kind of canned goods here. And then we have our fruits and our kind of dessert canned good items. And then above the canned goods, we've got some, well, we've got our leftover chalk. We have some like side dishes and like sloppy joe mix and taco seasonings. We've got our granola bars and our oatmeal for breakfast and some other snacks, uh, fruit cups, crackers, more granola bars. Moving higher up, we've got tons of leftover sauces and sauce packets from different uh, places we go out to eat. And then some homeless bag stuff, which is where I got the idea from, my mom. And she's got awesome sandwich wrap for when she makes delicious bread. And then just 
leftover containers up here. Then we've got our cereals and moving on to like our snacks. We've got some of the smaller little snack containers and then our opened crackers and chips. In this area, we have like our pasta sauce and other sauces on a little turntable back there. We have our noodles and more things that we would like make a meal with. Uh, same in here, we have our overflow pasta and uh, kind of dinner making items. And then we get into the sweets. So we have our desserts and our sugars for baking. We have things for s'mores and jello. Uh, and we also have more jello and dessert stuff up here where we have our drinks as well. So we've got our hot cocoa, some mocha mix that I like. We've got our tea and our sweetener. And we have our jello here and some dessert items, popcorn, things like that and our cutting boards and leftover or overflow of our drink stuff. And then down here we have kind of the stuff that we don't use as often. So the KitchenAid mixer and the bread maker. Although when I'm here, who knows, maybe I'll be using those a lot. And then we've got some like party stuff. If we were to add anything else, I would anticipate it would be just either a decoration right up here or some type of like little shelving that can hold just some light objects, but pretty much that wraps up this pantry. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and are as satisfied as I am with the final results. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you guys are new. I would love to have you stick around and I'll catch you in the next Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel. In today's video, I am going to be reorganizing my mother-in-law's cabinets and drawers for her kitchen. And we are gonna be doing all Dollar Tree products. So let's go shopping. stuff uh, it was just me in there and I was trying to get out of there as fast as possible so I didn't film too much in the store but I will show you a haul now all right so bear with me I have Aubrey in the background and I'm trying to film I got a whole bunch of these fridge storage bins I really like them because they have a little a handle and they're fairly wide but also kind of narrow at the same time I know very descriptive um, I got a lot and I don't expect to use all of them, but I wanted to make sure I got some for me too. I got four of these big containers for basic things like flour, big things of sugar, um, just so we have a uniform look. And then I got these kind of oval baskets. We're going for like a black and white type of feel. And I thought these could be used for towels or even like fill them up with some type of greenery as like a decoration for in the cupboard. I got some of these for to keep out like near the coffee, something for her fridge in case she wants to like store eggs and have it be a little bit prettier. I got one of these things just because they are multi-purpose and I know that we'll probably be able to find a good use for it. They also had these nice long baskets. <laughs> so I got four of them. Again, we're going with a black and white feel. So I got black and white contact paper as well as this kind of marbly look in case we need any of this kind of more sticky, foamy uh, liners for the cupboards. I got some black baskets here and something I'm gonna try and I'll let you guys know if it works um, is use a whiteout pen to label or like mark these baskets and hopefully it will be able to like erase. So this is gonna be something I'm worth trying, but if not, I've got labels to label these baskets. I also got some like pseudo command strip hook things. And my hope is that I'll be able to hang these guys in a cupboard, maybe holding some spices. I also got some of these dowels in hopes of storing spices in a different way. So I'm gonna see if I can make these work. If not, they're great for crafts. Again, I'm gonna try a different DIY for the spices. It's kind of like a DIY for the spice video because I'm gonna see what I can make work. I'm gonna see if I can bend this in a way to easily display the spices. I got four of these, the smaller little cereal containers, but we can put noodles in here or something else. And then a smaller version. <laughs> 
and then a smaller version of this type of basket. So that was my major haul. Uh, like I said, black and white themed. We're going for just trying to keep the containers consistent. She loves her light switches. We're trying to keep them as consistent as possible uh, because that will give it a very organized look. When you have too many different types of containers, it just gives it a more messy feel. So that's our goal. We're gonna work on that actually later tonight because during Aubrey's nap, we're gonna be visiting some other family. So uh, it's gonna be probably a lot darker in here when you guys are seeing how these turned out. But you know what? Maybe what I'll do is I'll film the before right now. I'll film the process. And then I'll show you the after in the similar lighting, but tomorrow. So this is the cupboard near the fridge. And so I'm gonna make this a drink station. They've already kind of moved it around to have it this way. So that works out perfect. We're gonna have the coffee here. And down here, we're gonna have some things for the coffee, maybe some coffee pods or you know whatever is needed in those cupboards. Then we have our stove. And in these cupboards up here, we're gonna have more cooking stuff, spices, um, dinner, like side dishes, things like that, uh, because that is typically what you use the stove for, and so why not have it right next door? On the other side of the kitchen, uh, across from the stove and near the sink, and what will be a lot of counter space when we're done, is gonna be all the baking stuff, and all the flour, and the sugar, and anything that you would just need a lot of counter space to make. That way, you're just taking it down, using it, and putting it right back up. So as you guys can see, it's already pretty organized. There really isn't like much mess, but I'm gonna see if I can just make it look even better, I guess. That's my challenge. In these drawers next to the stove, I'm gonna have utensils that you would normally cook with. That way they are right next door, when you need to grab them and use them. Right now, they're actually way over here uh, in like this drawer next to the sink. And so we're just gonna free up a bunch of space and make better use of this. Maybe this might be a good little drawer for some towels because we're right next to the sink and we need to grab a towel really quick. The towels are currently over here. So we're just gonna kind of move things around so that it flows a little bit better while you're in here working. And then this cupboard, I probably don't plan on touching too much, probably just kind of relining things up, but this is typically where they keep their plates and cups. And then we have the clean dishes that need to be put away and utensils in this drawer. So I'm gonna keep this little section kind of the same, uh, maybe move some of the cups as long as they're like coffee cups uh, over to the drink station, but this probably won't be touched. One other thing I wanna note before I actually get to work tonight is when we're dealing with shelves like this, you really want to bring everything as low as possible because that way it's reachable. We can always probably take another shelf from another cupboard and put it up top if necessary, but up top is where we're gonna keep the things that aren't used too much, and we might even put like that black little bin with some succulents or some greenery to give it a fresh feel, but we're not gonna be touching the top as often. So we really wanna bring everything down so that it is not too far away. So the other thing I'm gonna do while we're kind of waiting to go visit family and then, you know, waiting to start the pantry slash closet organization, I'm gonna try that little whiteout pen on the baskets and see if it holds up nice, but also cleans up nice. Okay, so I've taken it out of the package. We shake it up. And I'm gonna test it out on the bottom of the container in case it ruins it. I'd rather not mess up the sides. That way we can just use the labels that I bought. If you have a different type of basket, I was planning on using a kind of removable Sharpie marker, but I couldn't find it. So. I'm kind of happy that we're trying this new thing out and hopefully it, it will work out well. So I'm just kind of squeezing this. It's been a while since I used a whiteout pen. Oh, okay. So we're just gonna like write, it definitely comes out really quick. What I might have to do is just kind of create a pile somewhere and then write, dab it, write, so we'll give this a try. Let's let this dry. So it dried in like 30 seconds. Well, except for that really thick part, but anywhere that was like lightly written, it's nice and dry now. It doesn't come off. And looks like you can scratch it off with your finger. Probably use like rubbing alcohol or like hand sanitizer, but 
this looks like it's gonna work. All right, so I got one of these cooling racks and my hope is that I can bend it so that I can put it in the drawer, have spices lay on it, and then have spices lay on it again. So I need to bend between these two horizontal bars so that I have like a little like, I don't know, spice holder. So my first goal is to just bend this on itself. And hopefully this is successful, but if not, it's just a dollar wasted. <laughs> seems to have worked. Now, obviously it's a little shaky, but, but um, it is a test run. So I can try to figure out exactly the best way to deal with this, but let's go ahead and grab some spices and just see if it does what I want it to. Um, if I secure this, I would have spices laying kind of like this. And it looks like that size will be too big, but that size will be perfect. So when you're looking in a drawer like this, maybe this would go all the way to the back and then we can have something in the front. But the great thing is then you really see all of the spices kind of up at you as you're cooking and you can see what you're grabbing. The other nice thing is underneath here, we can store something to just kind of, you know, keep tucked away. Maybe there's extra stuff or, you know, a utensil that you don't use that often but I am optimistic about how this will turn out. guys so last night we redid all of the drawers and we have some pretty cool befores and afters and then today we are going to be working on the cabinets I'm hoping to get it all done lucky for me I have a little bit of help we have Sophia over here Hi. my niece she's gonna be helping me clean up some of the cupboards and just turn this place into that over-the-top look so this drawer has a pretty big turnaround because we got rid of a lot of extra silverware um, and then we have some plastic stuff back here. Uh, if in the future we need to put something back here, one of these doesn't quite fit, it's a little tight. And so you can just have like maybe a rolling pin or just something that's extra long and needs some space. So right next to the sink, we have our towels. I have one of these bigger, longer baskets that are filled so that um, maybe we can just kind of easily take it out if it's necessary uh, for extra cleaning or just easy removal. And I'm still trying to figure out what to do with this space if I want to just have towels also filled in. Um, and then maybe this one, once these towels are dirty and used, we can just pull this up so that it's easy access. Like I said, I'm still trying to figure this one out. Here we have like baking stuff or just things that you would use to like open cans. Um, you know, do the limes or lemons. These might get moved depending on what I find in the cabinets. And then we've got um, just some measuring spoons and then some little peelers. 
this is a measuring spoon or a measuring cup, but seems more like a serving spoon, so it might get moved. Then we have our knives. I'm reusing this guy. We washed it and just kind of organized the knives based on what fit and the type of style of the knife it was. And then in this one, we have wax paper, foil, and bags. This might get changed a little bit. And then in these two drawers that are next to the stove, I've kind of separated a bunch of spoons and tongs. And then we have kind of forks and spatulas and then some of the extra plastic spoons because those ones probably aren't um, as sturdy as these metal guys. And then in these drawers, uh, this is kind of undecided. I'm still kind of working on this, but this is gonna be our beverage drawer. We have some stirring spoons and then some spoons for these little containers that I picked up that are gonna hold either sugar or instant coffee. We're gonna make good use of them. Unfortunately, they don't fit in here. It doesn't quite close, but if we wanted to, we could take off the lid and just have a little jar that will hold something and then it would be fine. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, you don't always have to keep the lids on. shelf in this entire cupboard and I really wanted to make use of more of the space so I decided I'd find use for those rods they were too short to really help me with any other project so I figured I'd try to combine them by putting them through the handles of this basket and then shoving them in the holes in the little wall for the little things that hold the actual shelves and they fit perfectly and then you just I taped them together with some stickers and now we have another little workable basket for additional storage. So we have our little coffee station here. Right now we're just drinking instant coffee. So we have instant decaf and instant regular coffee. And then in this little container, we have the little Mexican chocolate to make hot cocoa. And then in this container, I'm thinking about putting this like um, cocoa, chocolate, something powder, meal replacement stuff. But uh, his mom isn't here and she's the one who drinks it. So once she gets home, I'm just gonna approve it from her and we're gonna fill this up so that it gives it a nice, like, cohesive look rather than having containers open. I also like to leave a mug in the coffee pot, and uh, if you have, like, a seasonal mug, it's the perfect time to put it out, and you can have your house have additional decorations. Then, again, in the drawers, I've kind of rearranged some things. We've added some tea. My niece, Sophia, helped fill this up and organize it for me. We have straws for the drinks, uh, little corkscrews and stuff, and some stirring spoons. I have the 
the little twin mug from the one that's at the coffee pot with some additional coffee grounds for if we bring out the other coffee maker. Uh, same with the little filters. And then this cool little container holds some sugar so we don't have to get out the other bigger one. So then in this drawer, we actually just store all of the mugs that are unique and don't have like a set because when they're in the cupboard, they give it a more of a cluttered look. And so here we can tuck them away. They're right next to the drawer for the drinks and everything's in the same spot. Coming up here, we have all of the uniform mugs and then two additional glasses mugs. Um, some other mugs that have like more than one in the set or that just kind of go together or that were too large to fit in the drawer. And then we have the alcoholic drinks way up top. Then we have our little snack station. This is where they tend to keep most of their snacks. So I really didn't touch that. Uh, right next to the stove, I wanted to make sure we had all the spices. So they are in these nice little pull-out containers so that you can get what you need. You can look for it and put it back and you're not pulling everything out and then having to put it all back. We have some things for hot pans and then also some command hooks that I got from the Dollar Tree just to hold the oven mitts. We have some more snacks, kind of more of the bulkier items and things that you would make with a meal. So like pancake mix is for breakfast, but they also have things for dinner. And then way up top, we have our larger pots. And one thing I wanted to make sure was to move the shelves as far down as possible to really have everything as close as possible so that we're not super reaching way up top to get what we need. In this cupboard, there was an exception for that rule because we had something that was really heavy. I didn't want to then put this additional makeshift shelf way up top because that would make it extra difficult to get to. And to be honest, I'm still working on this countertop and this is probably the last you'll see of it just because we are still trying to figure out what to do with all the produce and where to find room for some of these extra containers. So when this is all clear, this is where I envision the baking will be done, the chopping will be done. It's the most counter space. So I wanted to make sure we had all of the stuff that you would cook with. Uh, or need to use that space for. We also have some snacks up here, and then way up top we have the extra napkins and towels and their waffle maker and their little hand uh, blender. Okay, I was kidding. I cleaned off this counter. Keeping with the baking theme, we have the masa for the tamales, the sugar, um, some oats and the flour, and then some other like random miscellaneous baking items. Then we have the medicines and vitamins and the chilies. And then we have all this stuff is related to drink stuff. So we have their soda machine, the additional coffee maker, a juicer, and the Nutribullet and the Nutribullet's uh, items that go along with it. So I did end up keeping this cabinet pretty much untouched. I did make some additional room for the paper plates and these plates were in a different drawer. So we did fit a little bit more in here, but we made it work. And I'm not gonna lie, these cabinets here still need to be gone through, but I didn't buy enough liners for the shelves, so I figured I'll just take care of that the next time. But we did go through this one. This one actually had a bunch of pasta and noodles, and I cleaned that out so that the food would actually go up in the cupboards with the other food. And here we have a little um, kettle and the rice cooker. So I am officially exhausted. You can tell by my hair how hard I worked. <laughs> Um, I guess that's just going to be the new normal, as I've said in many previous videos. These wispies are not going away anytime soon. But anyways, uh, I'm really happy with how this turned out and I think my mother-in-law will be happy too. She's not here at the moment, uh, but I'm excited to see her reaction when she finally gets a chance to see it. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel. I take care of all things mom here, but in this video, it's totally organization and cleaning. I picked up a few Dollar Tree items for this project a while ago, and I've been planning and planning on doing this. 
and I finally found the right time. My parents are away and I thought this was the best time to just kind of surprise them with a nice clean fridge when they get home. So let me show you what I got from the Dollar Tree to help me out for this project and then let's get started. So the first thing that I picked up was just a little veggie storage container. I don't know exactly how well this will work, but I know that we have some blueberries that are tucked away in the fridge, so I thought this would be the best thing to put them in instead of the container that they're already in. So I'm going to give this a good wash before I use it in our fridge. The next containers that I got I really love. They are these little soda containers. I don't know how many cans we have, but I do plan on using them for storage of other items. But the nice thing about these containers, let me just get one, is that the back part is raised a little bit more than the front. So they actually are designed to keep your sodas rolling forward. Now this is a great thing to put in your pantry if you have canned goods as well. So I stocked up on a bunch of these. Now these next things are not necessarily for the refrigerator, but I could see possibly using them to store like bags of snacks that I prepare for Aubrey, or if we have like, I don't know, leftovers that are in baggies or things like that. I might use these in the fridge, so we'll see. And then the last thing are these little egg containers. I only have two. We tend to get tons of eggs in this house, so I may actually need to stock up on some more. But I do like that they come with lids and they can stack on each other. So today my real focus is getting the fridge part of my refrigerator done, not the freezer. That could be a whole nother task for another day. If I do have extra time, I'm gonna take you into the pantry and reorganize that as well. I did a full pantry reorganization video a while ago and I will link it up above, but it has gotten a little out of hand, so I figured that would be a pleasant surprise to come home to as well for my parents. So if we have extra time today, I will do that. And if not, I'll do it another day and still add it to this video. So keep watching to the end for that. But enough chit chat, it is now time to start emptying out the fridge and cleaning it out. But first, let me just kind of give you a walkthrough of what it looks like now. You can see real life, how messy we are sometimes, and kind of my plans for how I hope to reorganize this, and we'll see if they actually pan out. So for as long as I can remember since I grew up in this house, we have had like sauces and drink additional stuff and jellies other sauces and alcohol that we never drink <laughs> down on this doorway of the fridge, but we rarely use any of this stuff. And the stuff that we do use gets crammed in the back of these shelves. So for these kind of upper shelves, at least maybe for the first top two, I wanna have kind of organization like this, maybe use my Dollar Tree stuff, and just kind of replace all of this with the stuff that we don't use put it up there. And then I'm gonna take what we do use and put it on the doorway. The one exception will be the milk for sure because the doorway does get more warm than the back of the fridge. We don't want the milk to go bad. Doing this will also help me take an inventory of what we have and what we need to use up. So at least we'll have that. And then we did have one of these in the freezer, but it's nice quality, so I wanna make use of this in the fridge as well. As far as the alcohol, I don't know if I want to keep it here or if I want to, you know, move the shelves up and down and kind of store them in the back and have a better place where we don't always access them, but they're still in the fridge. And the last thing is since I'm now at Aubrey's level, I kind of want this to be an easy access place for her to grab her drinks or if I ask her to grab a snack out of the fridge, I'd like for that to be you know, something where like she can easily grab it. And while I'm down here seeing the eggs, I definitely want to move these because Aubrey tends to grab them and wants to hold them and I just don't feel comfortable with that.
fights and stuff and fights Turning truth to lies Gotta get up, stop wasting time Yeah, I wanna run off and fly And I tell myself it's fine to be alone Just to find somewhere that finally feels like home oh, oh, oh. I hate all this overthinking Oh, 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 oh The more I swim, the more I'm sinking Take me to a world of silver No more heartbreaks, tears, painkillers Take me somewhere unfamiliar Bring me back to where we started Get me out of now To where we started Get me out of now To where we started out oh, 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 Okay, so this didn't turn out exactly like I had planned, but let me just show you how I decided to organize it. So as you guys saw, I tried to put the alcohol on the shelf with the milk, like on the back side, but they're too tall. And so I figured rather than waste kind of vertical space in the fridge, I was just gonna keep them down there. I did replace the shelf with these two drinks, which will then free up when we run out of orange juice and maybe don't replace it. We can put a bread loaf there or something like that. Then we have more drink kind of condiments, kind of side soup and applesauce, and then some other leftovers that we need to use up. And then we've got our like toast section up here with the butter and the kind of little condiments here. So we have the last of bread that we need to use up, our butter and jellies. Moving on to our fridge, veggies, fruit stayed the same. This is now our little drink station. Once we use up Aubrey's drinks, this can hold cans of soda. Then we have our cheese and tortilla drawer. That pretty much stayed the same, although I was able to fit this Parmesan. And then our dairy drawer along with a random corn dog. And then here's where the big change, I guess, occurred. We have a lot of these condiments like easy removal, and then we have like cooking sauces, side sauces, and salad dressings. So if we're having a salad as a family and we like 
different stuff. We just take this entire thing out and we can all choose which one we like and then we can put it back and not have to really move too much. Finally on the top away from Aubrey are the eggs and then these extra eggs back here. This can then be used for leftovers when we're all done and then some extra like dessert toppings and things like that. I am planning on using up that Cool Whip, so that will be out of the way and make the top shelf even look more organized. So Aubrey is still sleeping, at least the last time I checked, which was just a couple of minutes ago. I'm gonna go ahead and make dinner right now and kind of hold off organizing the pantry, but I think I'll take care of that tonight and just kind of show you a quick before and after, not too much during. So keep watching, that's gonna be coming up just after this little clip, but I gotta make some dinner. several times it hurts to admit that we're no different i find it hard to commit but you don't even try still i'm better with and without you oh to me I just need this to be real I don't need no fairy tale You don't need a killer dragon for me And that wraps up today's video. I'd like to thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. Sometimes as hard as we try to stay organized, things find a way to become a disaster again. So in today's video, I'm reorganizing our pantry, addressing my chaotic crafts, and creating a better system for the kids' cupboard in our kitchen. I hope you find this video motivating and satisfying, so let's get into this. If you are new here, I'd like to welcome you to my motherhood channel. My name is Emily, and I am a pregnant mom of a sweet three-year-old. My little family is currently living at my parents' house as we wait for our new build to be completed shortly after I give birth. I do have to say I am going to miss this walk-in pantry, but I will definitely make do with our little one. 
I can't wait to organize our new home and bring you along with me. I post videos every Monday and Friday on a variety of motherhood content, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you stick around. About a year ago is when I organized this pantry for the first time. I will link that video up above if you want to see more of a deep clean of this pantry. With the exception of the OXO or OXO containers, I don't really know what they're supposed to be called, most of the organizational pieces are from the Dollar Tree. The tiered can holders, the plastic can holders, the cereal containers with the gray plastic lids, and the skinny handled plastic containers. Hopefully the pantry will stay this way as long as possible, but you never know. Moving on, it's a new day and I've managed to find enough energy to try and tackle organizing my crafting supplies along with some of my daughter Aubrey's belongings. The downstairs bedroom at my parents' house is where a lot of my frequently used crafting supplies have been accumulating, but things have gotten a little bit out of hand. So I brought down all of my stored supplies to eventually add to and organize and got to work. Honestly, this was pretty overwhelming. It's one thing to organize Aubrey's various toys, but craft supplies are something else. There are so many different tools and scraps and materials to keep track of, but I never seem to have the perfect storage system. Things just get piled on top of each other. Hopefully in our new home, I will find something that works for me and my supplies. During Aubrey's nap, I was able to separate her toys, some of my recently purchased kitchen supplies, and giveaway items. I also collected some things that I've planned specific crafts for, but I still had to go through a lot, like some DIYs from previous parties. Speaking of which, I feel bad recycling some of these crafts. I keep thinking, oh, I could repeat the construction theme for Jack's first birthday, or save the gender reveal decoration for a future pregnancy. But I realized that 
both crafts are very inexpensive to make and only create clutter. So sometimes having a pe more peaceful space is more important than a $5 craft. Later that evening, I managed to pretty much find a space for everything, which will hopefully make our future move and craft organization a little bit easier. For my last organizational project, I decided to tackle a little cupboard in my parents' kitchen um, that they use for kid items. As I was cleaning it out, I came across this item that TikTok made me buy, and I will be doing a review on this in an upcoming video, so stay tuned. Despite me wearing the same shirt as some of my previous clips, let it be known that this is indeed a different day. I am not superwoman and I couldn't manage to organize all of my crafts and do this on the same day. I think watching YouTube videos can sometimes be discouraging if you think everything is magically done all at once. So know that even if it takes you a week to complete a small project, you are still enough and better off than doing nothing at all. To create a more functional space, I decided to reuse this easy Dollar Tree DIY that I made for two previous parties. It is just a little foam board with some contact paper on it. I measured the space in the cupboard and cut this board to size to create two dividers. I added more contact paper on the back side of the foam board and let it extend on both ends to secure it in place on the shelf and ceiling of the cupboard. Thank you. 
If this wasn't going to be a temporary fix, or if this was in a more visible space, I would have wrapped the entire board with the same wood grain contact paper so that none of the foam would be visible. But honestly, the functionality was more important to me than the aesthetic in this case. The bottom shelf was a little more difficult to organize, but with a little help from a Dollar Tree shelf insert, more space was created, making it more functional. I'd like to thank you for watching this video and I hope you found it helpful and motivating. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I will catch you in the next hey one. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am turning my parents' kind of cluttered little cabinet into an organized functional space. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you are new here, my name is Emily. I would like to welcome you to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. I have been meaning to help my parents out and reorganize this little cabinet. I have some of my kitchen supplies here because we are transitioning between homes and jobs, so it's a little bit more cluttered than normal. And so I just figured I would do my part in tidying it up. And the first thing I did was empty out the entire cabinet and really try to categorize what we had and what we could get rid of or what we could move or put somewhere else. And then it was time to give these shelves a good wipe down. I used a Dollar Tree like magic eraser and really tried to clean it up a bit before reorganizing and putting stuff back. Don't forget to get the doors and the little hinge areas. These also get really dirty and I think sometimes we forget about them when we do our deep cleans. I also decided to tackle the little cabinet above the main cabinet. This is where we keep a lot of the stuff that we don't use as often like birthday decorations for cakes and whatnot, as well as some of my additional kitchen items. So I made sure to tackle this as well. After organizing some of our measuring spoons and measuring cups, I went ahead and washed some of these Dollar Tree little like candy containers, which I love, and uh, along with some other containers that my mom had. And then it was time to kind of start finding a space for everything. I moved some of the dried fruit that we had in this cupboard to a place in the pantry that worked, and then kind of tried to visualize how I was going to organize this little cabinet. I decided to use one of these Dollar Tree little organizing bins to store all of my specific baking items so that when we do move it will be a little bit easier and I know that that space in the cabinet will eventually be free. Then it was time to fill up the candy. This part is just so satisfying to me and once I was done with this I bagged up the leftovers because it was going to be a space saver that way rather than keeping these large like plastic containers around so i bagged them up and put them in their separate like overflow bin i find it hard to commit but you don't even try still i'm better with them without you oh
I also decided to use this little glass writing pen from the Dollar Tree to go ahead and label the lids of the glass jars. It does erase, it kind of smudges a little bit, but with the magic eraser it comes off just fine and you can rename them or relabel them if you decide to change out your candies. In this little overhead hanging shelf thing, I decided just to put the two items that have plugs just to kind of separate them out and then underneath I was going to organize the utensils that go with them, the little mixers or the whisk uh, or the little like emulsifier thing. Um, that way it was just a little bit more organized and categorized rather than throwing it like all in a big bin. And then here again, we're putting the measuring cups and measuring spoons. We had previously used one of these smaller baskets that's next to this one uh, to hold all of them, but it became a catch-all for like a bunch of other tools. So I figured let's reduce the space and make it very apparent that like this is where they go so that when we're putting dishes away, we don't get confused and make it more cluttered. Anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this video inspiring and motivating i know that for me like i feel like i function a lot better when the house is clean and so that was what i was going for here there are some extra additional clutter like this baking soda and baking powder that's mine and will be coming with me when i move so that will kind of clear up the space a little bit better as well as this basket full of my stuff that I showed you, my cake decorating supplies, and my glass bowls. Those will be leaving as well, so that will leave a lot of empty space for my parents to, you know, either keep that way and keep it extra simple, or if they have any more additional things they want to put in that space, they can do that. But I'd like to thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are turning my horribly messy pantry into something that is aesthetically pleasing and functional. So I really hope you enjoy this video. Let's get into it. If you are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. As you guys saw, my pantry was a complete mess. We recently moved into our new build, and honestly, my goal for unpacking has just been get everything in its place, and then I'll work on making it pretty later. I have a almost five-month-old baby and a three-and-a-half-year-old daughter, so unpacking has been quite the struggle. So like I said, my main goal was just kind of get everything in its place, and then I can deal with it whenever I have the time or whenever my baby is being taken care of by my husband Juan or another family member or whatnot. So today, this evening, Juan was able to kind of take care of the kids for most of the time period. You'll get to see Jack in a little bit, but uh, I was able to really focus on this project and I'm so glad that I was able to get it done.
So in a video a long time ago when I was just kind of starting to unpack, I did line our pantry shelves with some clear contact paper from the Dollar Tree. And originally I was hoping to just kind of drape over the contact paper so that the edges of the shelves would also be covered, but it kind of lost its stick underneath. So I decided to go ahead and trim it down just so that it was nice and on the surface and stopped at the top little edge of the shelf. And in another previous video, I opened up this little Lazy Susan and this can holder, as well as some other containers from Costco. And I just kind of tried to figure out exactly how I thought it would work best in the pantry space. I also had some little kind of uh, fabric containers left over from Aubrey's room. I figured I would repurpose them and use them here in the pantry just for kind of overflow later on. Time stops when I'm falling for you The world stops spinning My head is spinning too Time stops when I'm falling for you So when we were living in Texas, we went to La Madeleine's and I would always get Belgian waffles and I realized what made them so special was they actually had like chunks of sugar in the batter. So I did some research on Amazon and I found this pearl sugar that I'm so excited to try someday and make my own Belgian waffles. I have a Belgian waffle maker and it's just, you know, a matter of time before I whip up the recipe on this little bag and throw these pearls in and enjoy that delicious waffle that I have yet to find like an equivalent one in our area. So super excited about that. That will definitely be in a future video. And it may seem a little pointless for me to put like just two OXO containers in this clear container. But as you guys will see in a little bit, I have some like wire shelves that hang on the ledge of these um, built-in shelves. And it actually fits like right underneath. So it makes it easy to remove those if I need them. So for now, this is going to be how I organize the pantry here. We also had this little like paper holder thing. I don't know what exactly what it's called, but Juan helped me hang it up and I decided to hang some like recipes, some trash bags, and then the little bottom pocket is gonna be for Aubrey's snacks. Like so I can say she can go and grab something from her little cubby rather than 
hoard the entire pantry because as you will see, we do have some treats and I don't want her to feel like it's just like a free for all. So I really don't know why Pop-Tarts doesn't label their individual packages, but I went ahead and got rid of the boxes. So I made sure to label the individual packages with what flavor they actually are. I love the brown sugar as well as the strawberry ones. So those are the flavors that we have here. And then this little clear container, I eventually found like a black one that matched the one it's right next to. And so you will see in a little bit that I ended up replacing it just so it's a little bit more symmetrical and aesthetically pleasing. So I had two more like longer, thinner containers left over. And so I thought I would go ahead and put the overflow for the Lazy Susan in here and then tuck these under some of the other ones in the pantry. And then on this level of our pantry, my dad is actually gonna build us another shelf in the middle so that I don't have to stack one OXO container on top of the next. So it'll be like the perfect amount. And then we're even gonna have some like extra little shelving on the side that he's gonna build as well. So that will be an update in the future. I don't know exactly when it's gonna get done, but it will definitely be a, you know, more space. Obviously there's a lot of empty unused space on this level. So we're definitely gonna make use of that by adding another shelf and hopefully things will be a little bit more accessible. But that wraps up today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it's, you know, not the largest pantry, but I'm thankful that we have one. I know that not everyone does. So I'm, you know, just super excited about how functional it is. It stayed pretty organized since I made this, you know, video. So 
I'm super excited about that, that it's not just totally torn apart. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I would love to have you stick around and I'll catch you in the next one. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are doing a Walmart haul and we're tidying up and cleaning out my fridge. So to start, I picked up some extra baby shampoo since we were pretty much out and you know, the kiddos need to be cleaned. And then I also got some of these little parents choice nighttime underwear for Aubrey. I'm really hoping that she doesn't, you know, inherit my enuresis problem, but we'll see about that. Juan loves gnomes, so I had to pick up this little cute 18 month size shirt for Jack and then some extra undies for Aubrey. I got like a size way too big but she'd rather have them be too big than obviously too small so she'll grow into that and then a little shirt for Christmas. She kind of picked this out but I'm hoping that she forgets about it by the time she opens the gift from us. Then I picked up some of these sandwich bags. We had kind of run out and I couldn't stuff everything in one of my old breast milk bags for snacks. So picked up some of those, got some flushable wipes. If you haven't tried these, it does seem weird like the first couple times you try using them. But in my opinion, you get a quicker clean, especially if you have little ones and you're still wiping their behinds. I, I highly recommend. <laughs> then I got some more little um, like mini cupcake liners and some essentials, butters, fats, things like that. I ran out of butter and I know I'm going to be doing a lot of baking. And then obviously I had to stock up on some canned chicken fruits and I decided to get a lot of broccoli. I saw a YouTube where you can actually like roast frozen like vegetables and that apparently turns out really well. So I'm going to be giving that a try. And then I got bulk flour and beef and I will be packaging this up later. So I'm not putting any of the refrigerated foods away just yet. I'm really just actually trying to clear up my island so that I can eventually clean up my fridge. So I'm just removing all the tags, taking out all the little cardboard that comes in all of the underwear, which is kind of annoying. And uh, we'll be washing these before the kids use their clothes and unwrap them. I figured I'm gonna be taking off the tags at some point, might as well do it now. And then, like I said, we're just gonna be putting away some of the non-food items around the house. So a while ago, I think in my like pantry organization video, I did mention that I wanted to create a good system for identifying whether or not I had extra of a certain item. And I think, you know, the best thing I could come up with, at least now, is just to label my currently used items. So in this case, my Crisco, I did buy extra because I knew I was running a little bit lower and I didn't have anything like an overstock. I figured I would label my currently used item with like OF, like overflow. I guess I could have done like OS for overstock. There, just some type of label. I could even just do a star or something to identify that I have an extra of these items in my little baskets in my pantry. So that is what I've decided to go with. I haven't quite figured out exactly how I'm gonna do it if I have like multiple. Like, so had I bought two extra Cris Criscos, you know, maybe I have both of them in the overstock supply and then when I break into another one I will label that and say okay I still have one left or you know something along those lines but that is kind of what I've come up with so far so that I don't overbuy supplies especially if I already have those food items. Then we're just taking everything out of the fridge, giving everything a good wipe down. Uh, these shelves got pretty dirty at some point. I really don't know how they got dirty, but we're gonna be wiping that down and putting everything back in a somewhat organized manner. It's not, you know, super Pinterest worthy, but it's organized and it works for us.
Okay, so moving on, we're going to be bagging up our like large supply of flour and ground beef. And it figures like every time I get this big bag of flour, I keep thinking I'm going to come up with a good method that won't spill all over my counter and it never works out. I try pouring it, I try scooping it, and they're there's still flour everywhere. So I'm just gonna have to come to terms with that. But I reuse all of these bags like that I've labeled flour, the gallon sized bags. And when I'm done like pouring them out into my flour container in my pantry, I do just throw them back in the freezer and use them the next time. And so that way I'm not going through like gallon size bag after gallon size bag and I'm not wasting, you know, too much of that. And then uh, they do stay in the freezer well. And so it's just a better deal to buy in bulk. And especially with how pricey everything is now, uh, you know, I'd much rather buy in bulk than buy like a little bit at a time. And so that's also why I went with the 10 pounds of ground beef. I decided I would portion them up into one pound portions. So I'm labeling these quart sized Ziploc bags. And then I'm going back and like saying, oh, I should probably put a one pound on here so that if a certain recipe calls for two pounds, I know I need to grab two of the bags. So anyways, I'm using my food scale and just portioning up the ground beef. And then once the ground beef is like portioned out into each bag, I'm gonna be flattening it out so that it freezes like a little bit easier, stacks well in the freezer, and then also it will defrost a little bit quicker when it's like nice and thin rather than like a big chunk of meat. But anyways, I would like to thank you guys for watching today's video. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you guys are new, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe. I do recipes on this channel. I clean and organize and just try to take care of all things mom. Um, as moms, we kind of wear a bunch of different hats and I kind of cover all of them on my channel. So I would love to have you stick around and subscribe. And again, I will catch you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.